In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. Dear sisters, dear faithful, Saints Peter and Paul, whom we honor today, were the living cornerstones of the Catholic Church. A cornerstone is that which lies at the base of a building, thus joining together two different walls. A cornerstone is often laid ceremonially at the corner of a foundation to mark the beginning of a building. And so what a cornerstone does for a building in its earliest stages, Peter and Paul did for God's church in her infancy. Through their apostolates, they brought together into the church of God both the Jews who converted to Christianity and also the Gentiles. Through their apostolates, they primed the Roman Empire for a wide-scale conversion, which was nothing short of miraculous. All the odds humanly imaginable were stacked against such a wide-scale conversion. And yet, nevertheless, it happened with relative rapidity. And those apostolates of Saints Peter and Paul were fraught with irony. Rome was nearly at the height of her earthly power. And she was utterly steeped in the darkness of paganism and idolatry. Vice of every kind imaginable was rampant throughout. Christianity was looked upon with ridicule and with contempt. Those who adhered to it were slaughtered in the amphitheater. They were driven underground into the catacombs. And yet, despite the tremendous odds, these two holy men of completely different temperaments and backgrounds laid the foundations of the church in such a way as to prepare for the conversion of the entire world in a relatively short period of time. St. Peter had been a simple Jewish fisherman. and Prior to his conversion, he had blasphemously denied our blessed Lord three times. What an irony that he should become the head of the church, the prince of the apostles. St. Paul had been a highly motivated Pharisee, a man of tremendous learning. Prior to his miraculous conversion, he had nothing but indignation and hatred towards Christianity. Of course, that changed. On account of the faith which they professed, and on account of their episcopacy, which they exercised among the people of Rome and throughout the empire, they were both found guilty of crimes against the state. And so they were both martyred in A.D. 67 on the same day, June 29th, on different sides of the Tiber. St. Peter was martyred by downward crucifixion in the Vatican Gardens. And St. Paul was martyred on the other side of the Tiber, 
by beheading outside the walls of Rome. It was out of humility that St. Peter had requested that he not be crucified upwards, but rather downwards, so as not to die in exactly the same way as his divine master. And the Romans, of course, granted his request. He was crucified upside down. St. Paul, of course, was a Roman citizen, and his citizenship entitled him to a quick death. So his death was by beheading. Both of these princes of the church were martyred. Both of them spilled their blood in the eternal city of Rome. But their legacy lived on in the minds, in the hearts, and in the lives of the first Christians. The Pharisee, Gamaliel, who had been St. Paul's teacher, had prophesied well when he tried to persuade the Jewish council not to put to death St. Peter and the other apostles on account of their preaching the gospel. He said to them the following, If this work, this religion, be of man, it will come to naught. If it be of God, you cannot destroy it. What a prophecy that was. These two great saints of God had been meek and passive when arms had been lifted up against them. But they carried in their hearts the unquenchable fire of divine faith in Jesus Christ. And that fire never went out. That fire lived on in the souls of the first Christians, and it has been passed on successively throughout the ages ever since. The Catholic Church has the mark of apostolicity. It was that fire of devotion to Christ which conquered the world in spirit and in truth. It wasn't politics or military strength. It was devotion to Jesus Christ. It was devotion to the genuine gospel that he preached. Here are the famous words of Pope St. Leo the Great regarding Saints Peter and Paul. He preached in one of his sermons. For these are the men through whom the gospel of Christ has shone upon thee, O Rome, and you, who were the mistress of error, have become the learner of truth. These are your fathers and your true shepherds, who, to place you in the kingdom of heaven, founded you far more happily and in a much better way than did those by whose effort the first foundations of your ramparts were laid, from which he who gave you your name, meaning, of course, Romulus, defiled you by the slaughter of his brother. These are they who raised you to this glory, 
that you have become a holy race, a chosen people, a priestly and royal city, made the ruler of the world through the sacred chair of blessed Peter, that you should rule a wider realm by a divine religion rather than by an earthly lordship. For although enlarged by many victories, you did extend your imperial sway over land and sea. Yet warlike toil has subdued less to you than the Christian peace has subjected. The faith was Rome's strongest weapon in the world. And it was the faith not only preached, but also lived day in and day out, which led to the conversion of the whole world. And that is one of the most important lessons that we should learn from the wonderful lives of these two great saints. Namely, that devotion to our blessed Lord in the form of divine faith is more important than everything else in this world. And such a devotion to our blessed Lord in faith is also more powerful than anything else in this world. We may never be martyred as saints Peter and Paul were, But we must endeavor to imitate always their unshakable fortitude of mind and spirit. The obstacles to their work as apostles were formidable. And yet they overcame those obstacles despite all else. They did what anyone at the time would have thought humanly unthinkable. And notice something about the way in which they prepared Rome for her great conversion. Never once did they utter an unpatriotic word against Rome or against the emperor. Never once did they encourage or even approve sedition against the legitimate authorities. On the contrary, they inculcated in the faithful the deepest reverence and patriotism for the empire and for the authorities who represented it, even though they were great sinners, even though they had absolutely no morals, and in many cases, no conscience. Many of the first Christians went on to become Rome's bravest soldiers in the ranks of the military. And so the first Christians loved Rome. But they loved Almighty God and the faith more. And so when it boiled down to a choice between the unlawful commands of legitimate authority and obedience to God's holy law, They, of course, chose the latter. They remained faithful to God. And they underwent and offered up all manner of torture and suffering on account of the faith. And they didn't give it a second thought. It was second nature to them. That readiness, that preparedness to spill their blood 
on account of the faith. And if we look back upon their preparedness to spill their blood on account of the faith, we should be rightly ashamed of our own readiness on so many occasions to cave in to human respect, thereby catering to the expectations or to the demands of those who would place far less important things before obedience and fidelity to God's holy law. Verily, the first Christians put us to shame in this respect. And that is why we should have a great devotion, not only to Saints Peter and Paul, but to the first Christians, very many of whom were martyrs. We should ask them to intercede for us at the throne of God and thereby help us to become more attached to the faith. We must ask them to obtain for us a true Christian patriotism. We must love and pray for this country, despite its moral, political, and economic degeneracy. First Christians loved Rome, and so should we love this country and pray for it each and every day. And we must also put forth our very best efforts in the practice of the faith. We must adhere to the faith as did the holy apostles, Saints Peter and Paul, and the first Christians who learned and profited from their example. We must allow the faith to penetrate our entire being so as to inform and influence each and every one of our actions in the way that it should. And we must live that faith honestly, and truthfully and genuinely every day of our lives. Let us ask these two great saints on this, their feast day, to intercede for us at the throne of God and to obtain for us a share in their own fortitude courage, and glory. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.